wait, 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 wait. You're doing it wrong. Do not reboot your computer. Do not pass go and do not collect $200 until you find out the important technical differences between restarting and rebooting. I'll tell you why shutting down your PC probably doesn't do what you think it does, as well as covering light sleep, hibernation, hybrid sleep, all the mysteries, all right here today in Dave's Garage. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And if you've ever rebooted your computer, there's a very good chance that you're doing it wrong because it turns out to be a lot more complicated than one might think. I'll also explain the actual differences between regular sleep, hibernation, and hybrid sleep, and we'll take a look at how Wake on LAN works. But first, simple rebooting. As regular viewers are already aware, I was one of the engineers who helped write every operating system that Microsoft released from MS-DOS on through Server 2003 and XP, and those were much simpler times. Back in those days, there were only two kinds of reboot, the warm boot and the cold boot. In a previous video, I talked about the origin of the terms boot and reboot, and it's worth revisiting the topic for a few seconds because I think the source of the term comes as a surprise to some folks. Why then is it called booting and rebooting? What's it got to do with a boot? Well, you know how firefighter boots have those straps on the sides where they can pull them on more easily? Now, there used to be a saying that derived from that, which is that people who were self-starters effectively pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps, which is, of course, physically impossible, but still a clever visual. So when a computer loads itself up by starting with just a few instructions that then load the rest of it, that became known as bootstrapping, which has been shortened to just booting, and when you're starting from an already running state, rebooting. Let's begin with the difference between a warm boot and a cold boot then. When you turned on the original IBM PC with the big main power switch on the back, that was a true cold boot. Upon startup, it would do a full complete memory test, which was painfully slow to complete, and then it would boot to MS-DOS as normal. When the IBM engineers were working on that first PC design, they got plenty tired of having to sit through that long memory test every time they needed to restart, which was pretty often considering they were in the midst of developing the system BIOS. That's when an engineer named David Bradley took five minutes or so to do a simple shortcut, Control alt delete If you press that key sequence, which was designed to require two hands on the original IBM Model F keyboard, the system would restart with a warm boot. The warm boot would skip the memory test and other time-consuming steps and just reset the CPU before then loading the operating system from scratch. For all intents and purposes, a warm boot was the same as a cold boot, it was just a lot faster. On a cold boot, the computer starts up, does some diagnostics and self-testing like the memory test, and then it runs code in the system BIOS chip, which will then in turn load whatever operating system is on the first few sectors of whatever disk has been set as the boot disk. On a warm boot, the PC just resets the processor's internal state before jumping to a well-known location in the system BIOS, which, in turn, is responsible for loading and starting the operating system. Without a RAM test, the memory is not cleared and the contents of that RAM are visible across reboots unless the operating system takes steps to prevent that. Windows 95 was built atop MS-DOS and while control delete brought you to a uh, task list, pressing it a second time would still reboot the system. Starting with Windows NT, the control alt delete sequence was intercepted by the operating system and then used to bring up a dialog that offered you an opportunity to start my old friend Task Manager or to reboot or shut the system down. And that brings us full circle to the difference between restarting and shutting down. A lot of folks think there's only one difference, and that's whether or not your system then comes back up automatically after you pick shutdown. If you pick shutdown, it stays powered off, but if you pick restart, it comes back up afterwards. Easy, right? Well, up on through Windows 7, those folks were correct. But what a lot of people, most people I'd wager, don't know is that beginning in Windows 8, we saw a significant change in what those terms mean and what the functions actually do. That's because Windows 8 introduced a new feature called Fast Startup. It's a cool feature in many ways. It saves a lot of state about the system into the hibernation file on disk, and then uses that state in order to be able to boot up significantly faster. The problem is that if you're not aware of that difference, you might be shutting down and powering back up in the belief that it's an even more thorough approach than simply rebooting or picking restart. That seems like a fair assumption. You'd think that entering the completely powered off state would be the ultimate in freshness when it comes to a computer. And yet, it turns out that's not the case. Because beginning with Windows 8, a shutdown makes as much use of the hibernation file as it can. Because it's almost always faster to simply save and reload the linear state of some serialized object than it is to programmatically tear it down and reconstruct it from whole cloth. 
And so, using the hibernation file to save and reload state should indeed make for a much faster startup, but at the cost that some portions of the system did not actually get restarted at all. All is not lost, however, for those looking to truly reset the machine. Using a restart instead of shutdown will give you a full, no shenanigans restart where the machine state is completely reset. Once we introduce system sleep into the mix, however, it gets even more complicated because there are several types of sleep on a Windows PC. The first is light sleep. It stores the required state in RAM and enters a very low power state. How low power? Well, a typical laptop might only use 2 watts while sleeping versus 25 while just sitting there and 150 while working hard. Similarly, that desktop that you've built with the 750 or 1000 watt power supply can comfortably snooze away on as little as 5 or 10 watts of power, so it's quite a savings. Opposite of light sleep, we have hibernation. Hibernation is a power saving state designed primarily for laptops. After all, when you close the lid on your Windows laptop, it can only sleep for so long on battery alone, so eventually it needs to do something or power down. So it saves the state of what you were doing such that when you open the lid, rather than booting up and reloading all your programs one by one from scratch, the whole system comes back up all at once from the image stored in the hibernation file. And that includes work in progress. Nothing should be lost, even though the machine was entirely off. During normal sleep, the system will typically power down the display and any mechanical hard drives. During hibernation, the system is effectively powered down entirely. We'll talk more about the precise nature of what this means when we talk more about the Wake on LAN feature in a few moments. In addition to sleep and hibernation, Windows supports what is known as hybrid sleep. Hybrid sleep combines normal sleep and hibernation. Essentially, hybrid sleep writes the current state of the system out to RAM and to the hibernation file on disk. And then what happens next depends on what you do with the system while it is in that hybrid sleep mode. If you power the machine back on to wake it, it will be able to quickly resume from the state stored in RAM. If it runs out of battery or you power the machine down, it will be able to resume later from the hibernation file. In a way, hybrid sleep is sort of the best of both worlds as it can accommodate either outcome. Hybrid sleep is the default for desktops but is turned off on laptops by default. This is because writing out the state to the hibernation file takes some time. Plus, if you closed the lid on your laptop and then it began what seemed like a long period of furious disk activity, you might be concerned. Laptop manufacturers don't want a machine to get busier when you close it, so they generally prefer hybrid mode off on those machines. On a desktop, however, people are used to a certain amount of activity and delay when shutting the system down. We should also take a quick minute to talk about the Wake on LAN feature of Windows, which serves to make sleep and hibernation a great deal more useful because the system can automatically wake up as soon as, you guessed it, someone tries to access the machine from a LAN. When your machine is sleeping and someone tries to access it from the IP address, a special packet is sent to the machine's network adapter, which in turn raises the Wake on LAN event. For the curious in the audience, that packet is any Ethernet frame that contains 6 bytes of FF immediately followed by the MAC address repeated 16 times. A simple ping will not wake the computer. It has to be either the special wake up packet, a NetBIOS name resolution broadcast, or an address resolution or ARP packet sent to the computer's IP address. Back in the Windows 7 days, this was not possible as it was effectively powered all the way down. But beginning with Windows 8, the machine is not fully powered off. You can wake a sleeping computer from the command line with the wake on LAN command WOLCMD. You must supply the MAC address and IP address so you generally have to know about the machine in advance. Without going too far down into the rat hole of motherboard and CPU power states, here's what you really need to know. In Windows 10, the default shutdown behavior puts the system into the hybrid shutdown, also known as fast startup, state known as S4. All system devices are then put into a state known as D3, D for devices. In this scenario, wake on LAN from S4 or S5 is actually unsupported. Network adapters are explicitly not armed for wake on LAN in these cases just because computer users expect zero power consumption and battery drain in the shutdown state. It would probably be a scandal if Microsoft used a watt to keep your machine going and then some journalist found out about it and thought, oh, it's supposed to be powered down, Microsoft's burning a watt. Been there, done that. They didn't want to repeat that, I'm sure. This behavior removes the possibility of invalid wake-ups when an explicit shutdown is requested. And so, wake on LAN is supported only from sleep, state S3, or when the user explicitly requests to enter the hibernate S4 state in Windows. Although the target system power state is the same between hybrid shutdown and hibernate, Windows will only explicitly disable wake on LAN when it's a hybrid shutdown transition and not during a hibernate transition. What does that mean in English? It means normally wake on LAN works only from hibernation and not when entirely powered off. 
to be clear though, this appears to have been a design decision so that when you shut the machine down, it is fully off, as I said. If you hibernate the machine rather than shutting it down, then a tiny trickle of power is still used, but the machine will be able to arise from a wake on LAN event. It's also entirely possible that the firmware and hardware on some systems may support network interface cards that wake up from S4 or S5, even though Windows isn't involved in the process. For example, you could turn on the feature in your UEFI BIOS and then use Device Manager to allow that network device to wake the system, but you'd have to do those steps manually and set that up. And finally, how often should you reboot? As for me, I don't reboot unless my system seems to actually need it for some reason, which for me can be several weeks or even months if I'm just running mainstream software like VS Code and so on. With a more eclectic mix of games, apps, and utilities and drivers, you might find yourself rebooting much more often. On the TechNet site, Microsoft actually recommends that you reboot once a week, whether you need it or not. I kind of have my doubts how high that officially came from, but it's in there. If you choose to follow that advice, remember, you want to restart, not shut down. If along the way you found today's episode to be any combination of entertaining or informative, I'd be honored if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. It makes a big difference. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, please check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Remember, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go today. In the meantime, and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here at Dave's Garage. Are you subscribed yet?